Hello, I'm JW, and this time I'm looking at the CNC machine again. I'm just going to look at the uh, jog buttons, which are now working or programmed up properly, and a couple of other things which uh, had to be altered, which turned out to be not quite as uh, right as they should have been in the first place. So we'll have a look at those, and then after that we'll just have a look at all of the components which were actually used to make this machine, and also where they came from, and how much they cost. Uh, several people have asked for that. So uh, first half of this video will just be looking at the uh, buttons and then a couple of other bits. And then the second half will just be literally a list of the various components where they came from and also how much they cost. And I'll just put out here that uh, none of the products here have been sponsored or paid for by anyone else in any way. I just bought all of these uh, myself. And uh, bearing in mind that these are the ones that I particularly purchased. They're not necessarily the best choices and they're certainly not the only choices. Of course there are many other things you could have bought instead. And again, some of those may not be the most optimal ones, but nevertheless, that's what we've got. So if you're going to be buying any of this stuff yourself, just bear that in mind. Just because I bought these things and used them doesn't mean that that's the best option or that you should do likewise. Here's the code for the buttons. And as before, we basically go up to there, it says Operator, Edit Screen. Click on the top here where it says WX Router, which is basically the name of the uh, screen we have. And then down here, click on the middle tab there for events. And then the top one is the one we want, which is the screen load script. So click there, then over here, just sort of little three dots, and that will open the code for the particular script. And we can see the code here, which uh, so we've seen obviously previously in the other video. And uh, we can see here I've got the code there for the start, stop, and the hold buttons. And then further down, I've just added in the code for the jog buttons as well. So here's the actual code for the button. This is what we did on the previous video. So essentially it's just uh, if the state of the button is 1, as in it's pressed, then it will just do the command feed hold or whatever command we happen to want. Now the ones for the jog buttons are slightly different because uh, we've got two functions within there because of course when we press the button we want it to start the jog. But of course when we release the button we also want it to stop jogging because if we just put one in what would happen is when you press the button it would just start moving and then it would just continue moving forever until it either got to the stop or broke something. So the code is here, so we've got the two parts here, so if state is 1 then we're basically uh, running this command here, the jog velocity start and then within here you actually specify which axis you want to move, so in this case the x axis and then the direction, which in this case is the positive direction and then we want to actually release the button when the state goes back to 0 then it's the jog velocity stop command and that just takes the axis uh, which again is the x-axis in this case. And we can see the code for the other buttons is pretty much the same. This is the x minus so again it's the different input in uh, 9 in this case and it's the same two commands so the uh, jog velocity start and the jog velocity stop. The stop one is the same again it's just the uh, axis you want to stop moving and in this case it's still the x-axis but it's the negative direction of course we're going in the opposite direction there and for the other buttons it's exactly the same except in here we'll just have Y axis obviously for the Y and a Z axis of course for the Z and uh, this is the one that actually moves it continuously again we could put the command in here just to move it one step at a time but I'll just put that in there for the moment obviously all these things can be changed later if desired so once you've put the code in then it's just a question of going up here and putting uh, save, I'm not sure it here but you just save there and then exit and then within the actual screen just go back to operator and then just click on the edit screen there to return to normal operation. Now just do a quick demonstration of the button, so uh, the button's on here so if I press the Y plus for example then that will move along while the button is held in and of course releasing the button there will stop obviously the two commands we saw in the code and the others are again pretty much the same so that's the uh, X plus there just moving along and again we come back in the other direction it's the Y and the Z obviously is uh, again very similar so uh, in the two directions like that and uh, these do light up when the thing is set to uh, jog active, although for some reason they actually turn off when the buttons are pressed. But anyway, that's just a uh, software configuration issue. The uh, function of the buttons, of course, is perfectly fine and works as expected. Now, one other thing I had to actually change was this uh, limit switch here. Now, this is set uh, towards the edge of the 
it's just made a metal cover here. Originally it was in the centre and uh, had to move it over because there was a certain arrangement of the height of this in a particular height and when it was all the way over here the edge of this actually scraped along the side of the switch here so clearly that was not desirable. However it's only fixed with two screws, there's basically one here and one here and they were originally on this side so it was just a question of undo the screws, move it over and then just put the screws on the other side so it's just moved over basically the width of the switch itself. So this now clears that uh, with plenty of spare and of course in the uh, alignment here still the same as before so that works just fine. But uh, so fortunately it didn't actually uh, destroy the thing but it only happens when this is at a certain height and it's all the way over here which probably not that likely to occur in uh, operation, but nevertheless it uh, won't happen at all now. And this bit of white tape here, by the way, on the spindle is just there so that I can check the speed of it. One of those little laser RPM monitor things, uh, just those cheap things from eBay, so just to make sure that uh, the inverter speed it said on the display was actually the speed that this was rotating at, and as it turned out, uh, yes it was, because uh, of course it might say it's revolving at say 10,000 RPM but you can't obviously uh, visually check without uh, some kind of tool so it's just a little uh, reflective bit of tape there which uh, sticks on to uh, get the speed reading from it. Now the first component and by far the largest and also the most expensive is the mechanical assembly which uh, consists of pretty much what we've got here, it's the two side rails the gantry across the middle and also the z-axis, the vertical assembly in the middle, all supplied pre-assembled. Uh, this came from a seller on eBay called Janko Cow Cow 3. They also have a website at cnc1.eu and the entire assembly was £1,080. That included delivery. Next we have the steel enclosure which in this case is 600 by 400 by 300 millimetres it's just a standard electrical cabinet and it's designed for wall mounting, hinged and comes with the two locks on the front. Basically it's just an empty box. This one came from CPC and the price for that one was £97. Uh, then we have the spindle. This is a 2.2 kilowatt air-cooled spindle. It's got an ER20 collet mounting nut on the bottom and it also came with the mounting clamp. You can see that it's holding it in position. And additionally, it came with the inverter driver as well, which again is a 2.2 kilowatt model. And the total price for all of that was 305. And again, that included delivery. That was actually from Europe, but the seller was, of course, a Chinese one, just delivering their stock from a warehouse in Europe. Uh, these are the stepper motor drivers. There are four of these, of course, one for each motor. These are made by Gecko Drive, and these are model G201X. And I say there's four of those. Uh, these were purchased from the UK distributor for those products, which is Charter Controls. And all four of those are uh, £469. And the stepper motors themselves, again, obviously four of those. Here's just uh, one of them. Came from uh, CNC4U. These are four Newton meter, 566 ounce motors, uh, NEMA 23 size. And price for all four was £174. And then we have these two items here. The smaller circuit board on the top there is an Ethernet smooth stepper and that was purchased for, again from the UK distributor for those which is MVO Engineering and price for that £179. And the larger board underneath with the three grey terminal strips and the various wires connected is an MB2 and that came from cncroom.com and they're actually based in Thailand and price for that one £132. Now that's all of the major components there because there's plenty of other stuff as well and we've got some of the cables here and these are CY cables and these came from CPC as did the grey plastic glands you can see there and some of those are used elsewhere as well and the cable there is actually from 5 core CY cable 0.75mm uh, bought a whole 50m roll of that for £40 and there's another 5 metre piece of 4 core, which was just £7, so that's just for the spindle. And the plastic cable glands, sell bags of those, were £6. These are the limit switches, these are ME8111, and these came from eBay, a seller called Cute2U3. But again, you can get these from many different sellers, they're just a fairly generic uh, Chinese product. 
uh, six of those, and those were £13 for all six, including delivery from China. This Omron contactor is the one which uh, connects power to the various motors and things, and is also used for the emergency stop function. Uh, this particular one is a model J7KNG101024D, and I actually bought this from someone on eBay for £20, and uh, that was quite a lot cheaper than it would normally be there, normally about £45 or so, but, uh, so I got that one a bit cheaper from somebody. This switch, which a number of people have asked about, uh, it's a 25-amp uh, four-pole isolator, which is basically what you see at the back there with the black and the orange bit on the side, and it's also supplied with that extension rod, a 300mm in this case, and the front panel switch and the uh, adapter assembly there. The model for this is a TDS425-BRR3, and this came from eBay, someone called SCL Components 82, price of this one £14. The switches here, all those push buttons in various colours, those also came from eBay, from Seller Bible, one of these Chinese sellers, and they're all 24 volt uh, illuminated ones, momentary ones, and of course rectangular, as you can see there. That's not actually all of them, I do have some others which were spares, we could have bought a whole pile of those in various different colours, and those were £20 for the whole lot, and so that's only about sort of uh, two thirds of them actually in use at the moment. And these also came from Seller Bible. This is the emergency stop switch uh, and the plastic housing which goes with it. And got two of those. Uh, those were £9 for the two. And also got this one which is just the switch itself to mount in the panel. And that was just £3 for that one. Now the two main power supplies. Uh, the one on the left there is the main one. That's uh, from Meanwell. model is SNT HRP 648. And that was £105. And the one on the right there with the sort of mesh opening on the top. Again, it's a mean well, it's an MW HRP 124. And that was £38. And both of those came from Rykelt.com. Well, it's a company in Germany, but they ship uh, pretty much anywhere you want. Now, this is the computer which is on the top there, it's basically the monitor there, and the computer is just standing behind that. Now, all the parts of this came from eBuyer.com. And I have actually done a video on this computer already, so I'm just going to have a look at that one if you want to be seeing the individual components for that. But uh, essentially the whole lot cost £315, and that one included the case and everything inside it. And the monitor on the front there is actually an old one I happen to have anyway, so that didn't uh, effectively cost anything. It was just one that was spare from some other thing several years ago. Here's the keyboard and the mouse, and the keyboard came from eBay, and uh, that was only £6, including delivery. And the mouse there is just again an old one I haven't had anyway, so that didn't really cost anything. And the only thing inside the cabinet here is these two aluminium heat sinks, just mounting the uh, stepper motor drivers on there. And I got two of those, mainly because it was just easier to put them in the cabinet. And those came from someone on eBay called Future Eden, and those were £18, so basically £9 each. Now, of course, there were quite a lot of other smaller components. Um, they're all in the list in the uh, video description if you want to uh, read those. Uh, for example, here we've got the plastic uh, drag chain. And again, most of these came from eBay or similar places. The uh, drag chains there were actually £13 for four one-metre lengths. And so I've got a couple of those shown there. And, of course, in addition to those, there's various other mechanical parts. So you can see on the top there, there's various bits of aluminium angle that have been cut to various sizes, and, of course, various things like screws and uh, other fixing hardware and cable ties and clips and all kinds of other odds and ends and bits and pieces. So, again, not going to list those individually in this video. And a couple of other bits on the side here. Again, these quite small items. Got a couple of uh, mains inlet sockets there and a fuse holder. And also that one underneath, which is where the uh, Ethernet cable actually can pass through the cabinet. It's basically a double-sided socket arrangement, so you don't have to just have the cable going through the panel and uh, getting damaged. And then uh, finally here we've got this uh, foam mat. This is actually designed for uh, sort of children to play on, but I uh, got this from a bargain shop. It was only about £3 for the whole box of it. And I've just put this underneath here so that uh, it'll just uh, even up any differences between the base of the machine and this table, because though they're both perfectly flat, allegedly, of course, the uh, table isn't perfect. There's also a couple of signs on the uh, side there. Again, they were fairly cheap items, and they are listed in the list in the video description. And just another item to note is this uh, aluminium plate, which is uh, behind the spindle. I had to buy that because the uh, spindle bracket is actually wider than the plate on the front of the Z-axis there, so I just had to make that adapter plate. 
that was just basically a piece of aluminium which came from uh, again somebody on eBay and uh, that was just basically a six inch by six inch piece uh, just uh, basically screw it on the back uh, it cost nine pounds for that and then the only thing left is uh, this thing here which is not actually part of the machine but uh, it is obviously useful to have this this is a plastic tub with an airtight lid this came from Wilco and it cost uh, ten pounds and then on top of that we've got this uh, cyclone dust collector thing basically you put your vacuum cleaner in uh, one hole and then uh, rather than the dust clogging the bag in the vacuum cleaner in five seconds most of the dust will then fall down into the tub underneath so uh, obviously it's uh, a bit more convenient and this particular one came from banggood.com and this was £13 and again you can get those from various different places they're a fairly common item now so there is a list to all of this in the video description so you can uh, find a link there just download that and do what you want with it including the various sellers and things that it came from uh, total cost for this is uh, approximately £3,291 so sort of 3300 if you want to round that up to something and this was purchased over a fairly lengthy period of several months so some of these prices obviously may be out of date by now so that's it for this time and that was simply was just a list of the things that I've purchased for this machine not necessarily the most optimised items although of course they do all seem to work together but if you're going to be making something of this yourself or looking at buying something even similar do make an effort to actually determine what would be the most suitable parts because uh, just going and buying stuff randomly because someone else bought them is not a satisfactory way to design and build a machine of this type or any other type and just again this is not a sponsored video none of these components in this video are sponsored by anybody else they just have to be the things i've purchased and they are the companies they were purchased from and also bearing in mind most of this was purchased several months ago so of course prices and whatever may well have changed by now but in any case that's it for this time next time we're going to have a look at actually cutting something of course was the whole point of making the machine in the first place but until then thanks for watching